Kia ora everybody, my name is Irawan and I'm a student in the University of Auckland, New Zealand. And this evening I would like to talk about part of my research on prioritization of marine biodiversity conservation in the coral triangle. Uh, just give you a little bit of uh, background. Uh, coral triangle is a marine area between Indian Ocean and Pacific Ocean and comprises the economic exclusive zone of six countries, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Timor-Leste, Papua New Guinea, and Solomon Island. This is uh, known as the World Center of Marine Biodiversity because of this uh, space richness and endemicity. This area is region uh, uh, inhabited by more than 600 species of coral, 3,000 species of reef feces, 700 species of mollusks, and 300 million people living in the coastal area. So, uh, and there are anthropogenic pressures, climate change pressures coming to the ocean from, clim from uh, uh, destructive fishing, illegal fishing, uh, warming sea level, warming uh, sea temperature, and then sea level rise. But people in the region is concerned about the sustainability of their ocean. Since four decades ago, one of the approaches that they use is using uh, uh, establishing MPAs, marine protected areas. Currently, there are almo almost 2,000 MPAs in the region, covering almost 200, uh, 20,000 hectares of the, of, the, of the sea. However, uh, there are limitations of their MPAs to working effectively. First, because uh, limited coverage, only 4% of the area is managed under the MPAs in the ter territorial sea, or 1.5% under the EEZ. The second one is uh, there is a, a, a ecological or gap representation in the ecological uh, perspective. There's all, only 20% of the coral reefs, 12% of mangroves, and 5% 5 of mangroves and 12% of seagrass under the MPAs. And there's also a need to fulfill international obligations such as SDG 14. So that's why we, we, we design our research to, to tackle that issue to support city countries to develop their MPA network effectively. First one is to, my, in my research, is to uh, uh, what criteria, eco ecological criteria that we need to, to, to identify areas important for marine biodiversity. The second one is to, to, to identify that area based on the criteria that, that, that we, we use. To, 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 to identify the areas important for, for to identify the criteria for that one, we reviewed 15 international initiatives uh, uh, initiative to identify areas for, for biodiversity importance. So then we selectively choose this criteria based on the international and regional perspective, such as Natura 2000 is, also, is only working for the, for the uh, European countries, ASEAN Heritage Pass is only for the Asian countries, and also there's the terrestrial, wetlands, and marine. Such as Ramsar site is only working for wetlands, and then for the marine, it's like a ecologically and biologically significant marine areas. Based on our review, we found that all of these 15 initiatives, there are almost 200 criteria. Mostly, they are only working with eight criteria. Four criteria based on the habitat, such as unique and rare habitat, fragile and sensitive ecosystem, habitat, ecological integrity. And there are also four criteria dealing with species uh, attributes, such as uh, protected species, endemic species, biological diversity, an important area for evolutionary process. This area is like a for spawning ground or, or nesting ground of the sea turtles. And we also identify what variables that the initiative use to identify that criteria. So let's say if, if we would like to identify the fragile and sensitive ecosystem, most of the most of that initiative using habitat cover and var variables from species uh, space richness. So we identify to we try to we try to simplify the the, the the, the identification criteria so people in the region have an opportunity to explore this, this, uh, this uh, initiative. And we managed to publish the one, one paper from this uh, criteria last year in biological conservation. The second uh, uh, stage is we, we like to use the criteria to, to identify the priority areas in the, in the uh, coral triangle. And then this is, our, this is my uh, our, our, this is flow chart. So we managed to, to, to gather, uh, to gather uh, data from five different criteria, and most of my data, all of them are uh, openly, we can, uh, openly pub publicly open, so we can use from the drive from the, uh, the, drive from the internet. Such as, for the, such as for the sensitive habitat, uh, we use three different types of biogenic habitats, mangrove, coral reef, and, and seagrass. For the, space for the space range, for the space richness, we, we, we use a space range from more than almost uh, 10,000 species. For the occurrence, almost 20,000 species of, of, of occurrence. For the space of conservation concern, is protected species, 
uh, we use criteria from Red List, CITES, and National Regulation. For the endemic reef feces, this is data from uh, uh, endemic reef feces in the, in the Indo-Pacific. There are almost 300 species of them. And there's also important area for life history stage. We use uh, six species of sea turtles, nesting and migratory road. So in, in to, to we conduct a, a multi-criteria analysis for that one. And there are two types of them. One is a regional analysis. We're using hotspot analysis from, uh, from ArcGIS. And we're also working with site-based analysis. This, this is the method that I use for that one. And the data that uh, we, 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 collect from, we collect from all of the open sources data. And this is the first uh, biogenic habitat from this map that there are a couple of space sites in Indonesia and in Philippines which uh, have a high priority for conservation. Most of the red area, the high ones, contain three habitats. For the space richness, again, it's red, red one. A couple of, couple of sites in Indonesia, Malaysia, and Philippines have very high uh, uh, conservation values. Ah, this is the space richness. So most of the are in the middle part of the coral triangle. The red one is very high conservation values. This endemic ray feces. So there are two, spe two, two sites in Indonesia, in Raja Ampat and Papua, uh, in northern part of Sulawesi, inhabited by more than 100 endemic species, endemic ray feces. And there's also for sea turtles. There are a couple of sites in Indonesia and Solomon is have a very high conservation value. Based on that five criteria, we developed this biodiversity hotspot map, and we found that this area in the red one is very high. About 14% of the area is uh, clustered in the biodiversity hotspot. From this biodiversity, from this biodiversity hotspot map, we developed a site-based analysis this for more, more, uh, more uh, finer resolution, and we found that there are seven sites in, in the coral triangle have very high conservation value. Three of them in Philippines, like uh, one in uh, Ferdi Island Passage in the Philippines, one in Cebu Island, and three part if and four sites in Indonesia, uh, in Raja Ampat and Bunaken, Ambon and Key Islands, very high conservation value. The next stage is we like to apply the uh, the, the spatial decision support tools for the prioritization scenario, and then in this stage I would like to uh, to to incorporate threat from uh, human threat and from anthropogenic threat and from climate change. I hope it will be finished by next next two months. And then the second one is I would like to, to develop a web-based GIS for this one. I think that's it. Thank you.